Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Contractor Business Builder Podcast. We got the honor of talking with Matt Tebow. He is the founder of Savant Marketing. Super excited. How are you doing today, Matt? Doing awesome, Derek. Glad to be on the show again. Yes, definitely. Returning guest because, hey, you just got a ton of knowledge. And I know this is like so important for so many contractors and their growth curve is, you know, how do we utilize advertising so you don't have to be, you know, posting on social media or doing all that other, you know, marketing stuff and just be able to, I mean, hire someone like yourself or get ads up and running that can direct clients to, you know, our listeners here. So can you tell us like who you are and what you do uh, quickly? Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and thanks. I appreciate it. You know, I, I follow all your stuff as well and it's always really awesome so super grateful to be here on the podcast today so yeah so a little bit about myself uh, my name is matt tebow we have a marketing company called savant marketing agency where we work specifically with contractors um, these days we're mostly focusing on helping painters landscapers and remodelers specifically get more leads into their business so that they can grow so your question was like how i got into this so you know i've always kind of been entrepreneurial like there are always the warning signs so to speak you know growing up but kind of like the pivotal moment I guess would be when I decided to go to university, not because I wanted to, but because my parents said, okay, you need to go do something. So I went to university, which for basically a marketing degree. And while I was in university, I was experimenting with like a couple different online businesses, just stuff little stuff here and there but kind of my pivotal moment was i went on a mountain biking trip with my dad and he introduced me to one of his best friends and this specific friend was actually a marketing consultant so I've never before seen someone who was like super successful, you know, so I met this guy and we, uh, you know, hit it off and we got along well. And I asked him just point blank, like, what is it that you do? And he told me, well, I work with companies and we help them with their marketing. And in that moment, I was like, okay, I know that I need to just get as close as possible to this guy. You know, I want to learn from him. So I just offered him, hey, I'll work for you for free just to be able to you know, figure out some of this stuff. And so worked with him for free for about a year, learned a lot, learned the, you know, advertising and copywriting and all this stuff that we're going to be talking about. And then after that, I decided to go off on my own. So that's kind of the uh, the story. Yeah, the catalyst there. That, that's awesome. And so fitting as well of like getting around people that, you know, have been successful in something and you know, learning from them. And just that in and of itself will help you on your career or life direction and just a huge guiding force of being around the right people for sure. So with advertising, what would you say to a contractor who's afraid of losing money? I think that that's a big concern for a lot of people getting into online advertising yeah that's a really that's a really good question um to that question what i would say is like you know in business we're always losing money as like that's you know right it's like in business we're always losing money like whether you know you're hiring someone new that's kind of a risk right you're going to be losing money there whether it's doing any kind of experiment you're going to be losing money right so i just want to preface that like you know if a contractor is coming into advertising being like i can't lose any money or like i'm not willing to to, to experiment here or there then it's like don't advertise man because you know it's just it's not the right mindset that you should have but with that being said obviously with advertising what our goal is is to mitigate risk and to mitigate loss right so with advertising you know if someone comes in and they're a little bit nervous about like losing money you know the good news is that if you work with a professional like us we've made all the mistakes in the past right i've been doing this for about eight years now so we know what works really really well we know what doesn't work so what we can do is really shortcut the losses, especially in the beginning. Mostly what the losses will be in the beginning are putting out a bunch of different ads, seeing which ones don't work as well. And then we cut those and we really focus on the ones that do work well. If on the flip side, you're like, okay, I don't have the money to hire an agency to be able to really cut that learning curve and you're doing it yourself, then there's definitely going to be a lot more of a learning curve and you're going to be spending a lot more money on, on experimenting and losing money, right? But I think it was like Thomas Edison or something like that. He said like, oh, you know, I, I it's something about like, oh, I haven't found a thousand ways to to fail or something like that it was like a thousand ways that just simply don't work. So I'm closer to my goal or something like that. Mm. You know, yeah. advertising is a lot like that. You run tests and you're like, okay, that doesn't work. But then mm. you do another test and you see it work really well. You're like, okay, 
that money that I spent that I lost was money invested to figure out what actually works. So that's kind of the mindset you need to have. At the end of the day too, any money that you spend on advertising, as long as you're getting it in front of the right people's eyeballs, that still has value as well. Obviously we want to be getting leads, but brand exposure at the very least is worth something too. There's a lot to, to pull out of that. Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. Essentially like, you know, AB testing and testing multiple different formats and styles and, you know, headlines and pictures and, and all that kind of stuff. And then once you find something that starts to work, you kind of double down on that and yeah. continue to optimize and, and find what's, yeah. what's going mean, to be we, most effective. Yes. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. It's like, we do advertising too for ourselves. So mm -hmm. like we'll do experiments where it's like I'm spending thousands of dollars of our own money on experiments. And so it's like, yeah, it hurts for sure. I would say that if someone is like going into advertising, like you shouldn't go into advertising with money. If you're thinking to yourself, like, this is my last dollar. I really need this money. Like you should be looking at that money of being like, I'm OK if I spent that and didn't get all of it back. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's how I, think, I like to look at it. I think it ties into budgeting as well. Somewhat is like, you know, you have an advertising marketing budget budget and you know what is that for your company is it one percent three percent five percent you know are you super aggressive you mm -hmm. know with, with higher percentage and then having like allocation of money that's going to be for advertising for whatever and it's an investment right that it may not pay off now there may be mistakes but over time um you will be able to improve and the mm -hmm. idea is to, to find those those key ads that will produce a positive return and then you just you can ramp up and down from there the great thing about advertising is unlike you know organic or referrals they're kind of like you're kind of limited or cap as far as like your growth with advertising like there's going to be diminishing returns like if you spend you know massively like multiplying numbers in your advertising but you can scale it up and down if you're super busy during the summer maybe you scale it down a little bit if it, you know winter's coming up and you know you need to like book jobs you know moving forward you can fine-tune your your spend to to make more consistency in your in your lead gen essentially is, is what yeah. i found it. what are your thoughts on that yeah exactly and if you know your numbers based off of how many leads that you get and then what your conversion would be like that. So like if you're working with shameless plug here, if you're working with a good company like ourselves, yeah. we mm -hmm. guarantee results. So it's like if you yeah. know that you're going to be getting the leads coming in, then you can just be like, OK, out of this many leads, we book this many appointments and land this many jobs. So that's kind of what we we like to get to with our clients is every month we say, cool, you got this many leads this month. Then you book this many estimates. You landed this many jobs. Now we know what your conversion is at each level in the sales funnel. So mm -hmm. then that's how we can like really start to scale it right it's like okay hey, now it's just like that's the ultimate power game of what you were talking mm -hmm. about with advertising once you know how many leads you need to land a job then you can yeah. just scale the leads right yeah it's a beautiful place to be in and it's like as a business owner you're just like so much more in control when you have those numbers in front of you and it's like okay if i want to double my business i just like this is the spend or this is what i need to mm -hmm. bring in this many leads and you know it's just like more or less like clockwork obviously it's not a hundred percent but you can see the relation and and know what it takes to, to get to your kind of your next levels of, of business. So what are some common mistakes you see contractors making when they when they get started with with, um, you know, online advertising? Yeah, I would say like <laughs> number one mistake is like, you know, plopping into chat GPT, just something like, <laughs> oh, like write me an ad and then they'll take that, put that on like Facebook and just like boost it. I mean, mm -hmm. it'll get you leads for sure. It, it, it would work. I would say like that kind of approach though is kind of how you end up falling into just basically, you know, a sea of different contractors who are all kind of saying the same thing, right? Yeah. So like our biggest challenge when we're working with the client is how do we actually help this client stand out from the crowd? Because really what it comes down to is how do we get the cheapest possible leads? So the number that we're always looking at is cost per lead. How do we get the cost per lead down, right? Because we know if we get that down, then we're able to scale, right? We're able to make it make sense. So the biggest mistake that I would say contractors make when it comes to advertising, I'm assuming they're doing it themselves with this question, would be like just putting out an ad and seeing all ads as like the same, because that's not true, right? If we're able to have a different angle where it stands out, it gets someone's attention. Like every single contractor is doing like 10% off or 15% off and they all have the same kind of image. And I mean, it's gonna get you leads, like I said, but it's not gonna get you the cheap leads enough where it can be profitable long-term, right? And so this is why you get contractors like, you know, they'll boost it for a couple of weeks, 
kind of works, maybe not. And then like, they're not consistent with it, right? And so I would say that's the second mistake is like getting to the point where you can be consistent with advertising because it's like, you can't be the type of guy where you turn it on for like 30 days and turn it off and then you turn it back on and you turn it off. It needs to be something that's consistently there. And I know this from doing advertising for ourselves. Sometimes it's like people will come in through our funnel and I'll talk to them and they'll be like, yeah, I saw an ad uh, from you like online a couple months ago. I I went to your website, then I clicked your podcast and I listened to the podcast and I downloaded your case study and that was in your email list. And then I saw an email and I booked a call. It's like, that's how yep. it kind of works, right? Perfect. So anyway, I would just say like biggest mistake that a lot of contractors make is just thinking that all this stuff is very linear and that it's kind of just like, oh, I put this in, I pay for this money and I get leads back. There's a lot that's going on. It doesn't exist in a vacuum, you know? Yeah. And I think that kind of leads into like leading indicators of like you're putting out ads, content, you know, like that's the stuff to kind of be watching because it can take months, even years for some of those people to convert and you need a lot of different touch points. You know, the, the payoff from it is going to be into the future over time it's not I mean, hopefully you get some quick success and, and those do come in, but uh, yeah, but the the investment does pay off over time. What do you say to like, like for myself or some of my clients, I know like lead quality is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. obviously the lead quality is going to be different if you're used to getting like referrals yeah. or, you know, straight from organic. So what are your thoughts on like lead quality really and, good, and adjusting yeah. for that? That's a really, really good question. Yeah. So this term from contractors gets thrown around a lot. Price shoppers, right? Like, yeah. oh, like, I don't want any price shoppers. Usually, like, the people that are coming in through that a contractor will call a price shopper is typically someone who's just not ready to buy right now. They're higher up in the sales cycle, right? If we picture it as like a funnel, they're at the very top of the funnel and they're kind of just poking around just to figure out, like, what is actually going on here? They're doing their homework, right? They might not be ready to pull the trigger yet right now, but yeah. they're thinking about getting it done in the next two months or so, right? So it depends on the platform that you're using right we'll talk a little bit i'm sure about like stuff like google compared to facebook because facebook it's like you're talking to people who are a little bit more just kind of window shopping a little bit, right? Whereas on Google, those people are actively searching for, I wanna get this done fairly quickly. Now that's not a hard and fast rule. Like we have some clients where a Facebook lead will come through and they'll close it like within the day and it's like a $70,000 bathroom or whatever, you know? It happens, but you know, for the most part, that's kind of how it is. So back to your original question, a lot of contractors, you know, they'll talk about quality of leads, right? And so if you're expecting internet leads to be the same as a referral, like it's not happening, right? Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of contractors, when they're talking to referrals, you can make so many mistakes with the referral and still yeah. get the deal, right? Your appointment setting could be shit. Your follow-up's terrible. You yeah. you could say like, oh, I'll send you the quote tomorrow and forget it and then send it back to them because they know, like, and trust you and want to work with you, right? Yeah. Whereas with the online advertising, we actually train our clients quite a bit on appointment setting because they are talking to one or two other contractors, right? And so it's going to require a higher level of proficiency in the appointment setting process, right? Now there are things we can do, like a sign that the lead quality would actually be bad is like if you're getting leads coming in and they're not answering the phone at all and like you're calling like five, 10 times, you're not getting an answer, like that's a bad sign. Or if you're picking up the phone and they're like, what quote? Like, I don't even remember who you are. Like, those are signs of bad quality leads, right? But if you're getting on the phone with someone and they're like, yeah, I want a bathroom done. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a good quality lead, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Definitely. So yeah, not going to be as strong, obviously, as a direct referral. But the important thing is that, you know, you're paying for these leads. There's going to be a bunch coming through some qualifying and, you know, figuring out, you know, which ones are going to be, you know, good, suit, well suited for, for you at, at this time. Yeah. Uh, and then having the proper process like you know we may get into it later but there's a whole process you know obviously like the advertising is getting you the lead getting you that that warm contact but the effectiveness of you know your follow-up your appointment setting your sales process even your, your estimating you know process all that stuff is going to tie into you know how effective and valuable these leads are going to be mm -hmm. for you so yeah um, but you touched on like google and facebook ads obviously those are kind of the two big ones in the space that i would say pretty much all contractors would be using can you give us like a breakdown of you know which one to use or how to use both pros and cons how do you differentiate those yeah so i would definitely say like facebook and google are the two media sources that like contractors should be using that's what we use as well so basically
basically the way I break it down is Facebook. Think of it as what I call push marketing. So we're taking an ad and we're like, okay, these are the people we want to reach. Let's push this message or this ad in front of them. They haven't necessarily asked to see it, but we're showing it in front of them and being like, we think that you're going to like this, right? Whereas Google is what I call pull marketing. So people are actually searching for what it is that you offer and we're just pulling them into our funnel. So we're essentially just like, hey, what you're searching for, pick us, right? So very different, right? So the person on Google knows what they want, they're looking for it, and now it's just a question of who am I gonna buy from, right? So that's a completely different environment to market in than someone who has no awareness or anything and they're just like, oh, there's an ad there, I'm kind of curious, right? So Facebook inherently because of that is gonna get a lot more leads coming in through, but they're gonna be slightly less qualified than Google simply because like of what I said, they just kind of stumbled upon this ad, right? Now, there are things that we can do in Facebook ads to increase the lead quality. Something that I personally like to do that I recommend for a lot of our clients are doing a series of different selfie type videos where they're filming themselves and being like, hey, what's going on? This is Derek. And I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're offering homeowners right now. And just doing a series of those videos over time, it's going to build a lot of desire. It's going to build trust. And people can actually be like educated on the project or like the type of work that you do. For example, like we have some clients who do like pretty specialized types of services. Like we have a client who does basement lowering, right? So like he actually helps like drill down the foundation and basically yeah. lower the basement essentially. So the ceiling appears to be higher, right? That's a service that not a lot of people even know exists. So the ads that we're doing are like, hey, did you know that you can actually lower your base? You know what I mean? So that's something that Facebook has that Google just does not have because if you don't know it exists, then how are you gonna search for it, right? So Facebook definitely has that advantage there. What Google has though, is like I said, is that people kind of already know what they're searching for. So those leads that come through, they're gonna be hot. Like they're gonna be people who are looking for a service to get done. Downside of Google though, is that it's very competitive because everybody is fighting over that 5% of the market. They want that. So the price per lead is going to be a lot higher. So it's going to require more capital, right? The other issue with Google that not a lot of people talk about is that you're capped out at the search volume per month that people are actually searching, right? So if there's only a hundred people per month who are searching for, you know, painting services, then no amount of increasing the budget or no amount of tweaking the ad or anything can go above that, right? So oftentimes contracting businesses that are very reliant on Google ads, when they go into their slow season, they struggle quite a bit because no amount of tweaking that ad is gonna give you the lead flow that you want. Where, whereas if you're running through on that issue on Google, then you can crank Facebook ads and start getting leads coming through. Yeah, maybe they don't want the work to be done right now, but you can at least have some deals to work while Google is getting like the low hanging fruit, you know? Yeah, definitely. So uh, a strategy that combines both and, and utilizing yeah. both for what they're well suited for sounds like. Yeah, I'm a little bit hesitant when a contractor is like, I just want to run Google ads because yeah. it's gonna to take quite a bit of money to be able to get them to the point where they have like enough leads for it to make sense. And then if we do have a slowdown, it's like we don't have a lot of control to be like, okay, I'll pull this lever and give you more leads from here, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. Thanks for, for like the, you know, the mind frame of like the person on these platforms and, and how to, uh, yeah, will direct what you're doing towards them. So just another question about like a lead magnet. Have you ever used one on ads or in marketing in general? And what are your thoughts on those? Like like a home buyer's guide or design guide or some sort of like kind of free, you know, download that someone could get. What are your thoughts on that? I think it depends on the type of niche that you work in. So let's say that you're a painter. I don't think that you should be doing stuff like lead magnets and that kind of stuff. I don't think it's necessary because you're going to get a lot more leads come through. But if you don't have the lead nurturing system on the back end, which most painters or contractors wouldn't have, then you're just going to be wasting a lot of leads. You're going to get on the phone with a lot of people who may have wanted a guide, but like don't actually want their house to be painted. Whereas like doing a lead magnet makes more sense for businesses that are selling something that's like really high ticket 
and the sales cycle takes longer. So for example, let's say that you're like a developer, right? Like you're a home builder or a developer or something like that. That's where I think it makes sense to be giving out like these lead magnets and such. So then like you can call people up and be like, oh, like, right. Cause these are decisions that are going to take maybe one or two years or something like that. So then you can get that lead and, and kind of walk them through that cycle. Whereas for like a five or $7,000 painting job, exterior, whatever, it's like, just get the quote, you know? I'd like yeah. to just go straight for the jugular. Yeah, the, the sales cycle is much shortened and people are generally, you know, yeah. ready to, to move forward with with whatever um, project they're yeah. looking for. Um, so what are some simple things contractors you know can do themselves to to better improve their ads? I would say the number one thing is to start using and leveraging your personal brand a little bit more. That's something that not a lot of contractors are willing to do because it can be kind of like scary and everybody hates to see themselves on video. I'm sure I'm going to watch this later and cringe, right? <laughs> but it's the type of thing where um, <laughs> we give our clients scripts. So we have a number of different uh, scripts lined out and we say, hey, here are some scripts, give these a shot and just filming yourself. And you know, the first couple ones are, aren't so good, but after about five of them, you've got some pretty solid videos of like you filming yourself and showing off some of the work. And this is by far what we found, one of the easiest hacks to be able to get leads cheaper and build trust because there's just a higher barrier to entry now, right? It's like anybody can just grab a, a, a stock photo and then like throw up a Facebook ad, chat GPT, whatever it's out there. So what we want to start doing in our marketing is basically how can we, you know, how can we get a next level up? And the easiest way to do that is just using personal branding. So showing pictures of you, showing pictures of your team, videos of you talking, like leveraging the trust of that by far one of the easiest things that a contractor could do to just like change their marketing completely. Yeah. And I think like the warmth of a client when they get on the phone with you, if they've seen a few of your videos, they they know your voice, they know what you look like, they've probably seen maybe some of your projects or whatever you've been sharing about. So it's like you've already built up some rapport and trust and likability before they've gotten the call. So the sale is just quicker. It's easier. You've already, you know, put yourself above probably your competition and getting on camera. Yes, it's super awkward at first. And when I started like, you know, my career of like YouTube and, and everything like that, that it was like, yeah, I could barely, you know, get across a sentence without, mm, uh, you know, like, and <laughs> after a while, you just get you get used to it, you get much more comfortable, and it just like rolls. So it's really, it's almost like a superpower, I would say for contractors, if you can yeah. get past that, you know, uncomfortableness of being on camera and like listening to your own voice and seeing yourself and like, you know, all that kind of self consciousness of it, you'll be able to produce much better content. And it'll it'll improve your marketing and your sales so much. So I, I love that you, you pulled out that point and you know, work with contractors, is to help them get some of those just preliminary videos and they don't have to be long right like 30 seconds yeah. minute maybe yeah. two minutes and you, you build over time right so can you walk us through a success story of, of clients of yours you know kind of how they came to you where they started and, and where they're at now yeah for sure we have a couple on our site so like for example there's one on our site that's a painter and his name's justin and when he came to us he was doing like some door knocking um but he didn't have really the online marketing aspect so he had like his friend trying to do some Facebook ads and such like that, but nothing was really sticking. They were doing around 450,000 a year type thing. Young guy, like pretty motivated, successful. Anyway, so when he started with us, we implemented a Google ads and Facebook ads and implemented like a lot of the strategy that we're talking about here, right? So one of the big things for him was that we went really hard on content, right? So it's like what I find with Facebook, it's all about content. So before and after pictures, action shots, we got like pictures of him and his crew, like doing exterior, you know, he had like the videos. So we went pretty hard on the content side of things. And then on Google, um, the area that he was in, we saw that like he had a couple big competitors, but there were certain keywords that none of them were really bidding on. So I won't get too techy, but like we bid on some of those keywords that were like, they basically like weren't bidding on they're, they're called long tail keywords right so instead of like house painter like that's it it would be like best painter in city you know what i mean yeah so we went mm -hmm. after some of those long tail keywords so 
Long story short, we worked with him for two years. And within that two year span, he went from 450 to 2 million. <laughs> now, obviously not all of that was just from our Facebook ads. I mean, I would love, I would love to be able to see that. <laughs> um, but you know, like that was like a pivotal part for his business, right? Is getting the point where the lead gen is dialed into the point where then, cause it's basically, it just comes down to getting enough work coming in and enough leads coming in that you can hire more people and then crank the ads more and then hire more people right mm -hmm. so it's kind of like that that uh building block between so that's a story um that like you know was like a good success story so that's like one where you know 450 to 2 million but even sometimes you know it's like another story would be something like you know we had a contractor where he was doing like only a hundred grand you know a year doing bathtub reglazing so it's kind of like more of a niche type thing one man show was relying like on you know thumbtack or like home stars, like these kind of things, but not really yeah. building his own brand. And so mm -hmm. we came in and just did like a small Facebook ads campaign for him and just implementing something like that. Now he's doing about 200 grand. So it's like, maybe that's not a huge difference, but for someone like him, it's like, wow, this is like game changing, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. A double, it's a double your business, you know, um, even if, if you're just a one man show and you know, doing a decent living, doubling your business, like, and your income is, that's a huge change uh, of lifestyle and uh, big success for sure. Yeah. For a lot of contractors, like what we find is that if they're doing 300 K and under it's sales and marketing, like you just need more leads and you just need to sell more. That's pretty much it. And yeah. then anything above that, it's like a lot of the stuff that you teach systems, like hiring people, like how do we build in like an actual business that can run without you, right? Yeah, the, the scaling aspect of it for sure. Like they sort of go together, but yeah, depending where the business is at, yeah, the systems and everything just, just help with scaling because only one person can only do so much and, you know, efficiency is really, you know, nosedive and reputation nosedives too. If you're growing too fast and not having the right people and systems in place, essentially. You mentioned before about content and, um, you know, your client, you know, having a bunch of different content. How, how important is like social media content or content on the website? How does that tie in with the advertising and, and how do they work mm -hmm. together? Yeah. So for Facebook ads, I would say that content has become like more important now than ever. Like what we notice now is that the algorithm and AI, like all these buzzwords, basically the better the content is, Facebook is like, wow, people are really liking this. We're just going to show this more and more and more. So what we find is uh, clients who send us like weekly content, you don't even have to overthink it, man. Just take like pictures on your cell phone, right? Clients who are sending us weekly content that then my team can go in and like test it every now and then we'll get one ad for whatever reason like people just find it really interesting it pops off and so we just put all of our resources into that one ad and just allocate the budget there and like basically milk yeah. it for as much as we can and then like it'll it'll work it, it'll pull for maybe like three to four weeks and then it slowly just starts dying and then we have to implement like something new so that's like on the facebook side like facebook ad side in yep. terms of like the organic content like what you were saying like posts and stuff like that that is more of what i call trust signals so then like someone will see the ad and then they'll click on the business page and they'll just like do research about the company. And so what we wanna see is like, someone clicks on the page and then they're gonna see like pictures of your crew. Like it amazes me how many contractors will just hire some like social media admin person for a couple hundred bucks or something who's just posting like stock photos of like holidays or like just unrelated type pictures. Don't, yeah. you, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Like just literally once a day, just snap a picture of like what you're working on or a picture of your crew or whatever, or a selfie and just be like, Today we're working on framing this, you know what I mean? Just just, yeah. just document what you're doing. That's all that people want to see because they just want to see like, is this a real company? Like, do I like this person? And is this company like going to stick around? Like, is there proof yeah. that they're not just like here today, gone tomorrow type thing? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you can think of social media or making content like it's deposits in the bank, right? Like you're always depositing, you know, it's money in the bank. And if you go like if you're looking for returns and everything, it takes time. And the more deposits you make, you know, the better your returns are going to be essentially. And with the whole content thing, you know, what you mentioned before is like, yeah, people really like a 
authentic stuff. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be super crazy polished and just consistency is a, is a huge thing. And if you, if it's like too cut time consuming, you don't like it, even just like take the picture, take a quick video and just have like an admin person or your marketing person or someone who can put those out for you onto social media. There's lots mm-hmm. of tools nowadays where you can like, you know, put a post out to, to a lot of different channels and it's, it's really not too complicated, but uh, yeah. yeah, thanks for yeah. sharing with us, like how the, the content ties in with that. So we'll get to another question or two after this, but what's the best way for people to connect with you? Honestly, Facebook. So just search me, Matt Tebow on Facebook. I've got the blue check mark. So it's T-H-I-B-E-A-U. I'm most active on Facebook. Or if you want to like actually contact me, you could go to savantmarketingagency.com, S-A-V-A-N-T, Savant. And there's like a calendar button on there. Our podcast is on there. So that's probably like, you know, if you want to contact me directly, but if you just want to follow me, um, Facebook is best. Yeah, you've got a, an awesome Facebook group too, where, you know, you're you're very active and, and helping your community there. Um, so we'll put those links um, in the description if people want to go uh, check it out and check it out. Um, links in the description there. We mentioned before, like, obviously we've talked about advertising and you've shared a whole ton of great knowledge of that. You, like, I know you're also a sales guy as well and, and know that aspect of, of the business. So what are some like tips or thoughts of like when the lead comes in from the advertising like do you help clients with that that sales process as well or anything that you can share in regards to like after the the lead you know gets on the phone or or contacts you know one of your clients yeah so we actually created a course that all of our clients get it's called appointment setting mastery so when they work with us we walk them through that course just to make sure that they're making the most roi from everything that we send them we've got some stuff we're working on for like maybe a done for you solution down the line but we don't have it quite yet but basically what i would recommend like just some real quick tips is like speed to lead. Like if a lead comes in, just call it as soon as possible. Like it's not weird. If a lead comes in and you call them like literally seconds later, they might be like, wow, that was fast, but you got them on the phone. So like, good job. (laughs) If you let a lead sit for like days, like the weekend or something like that, and you call them, you can still get a hold of them. But like the odds of you actually booking that appointment have gone down significantly because we don't know what their situation is, right? Maybe they're talking to someone else, maybe before moving forward with someone, they thought maybe I'll get one more quote, you know, and then they waited too long. And then so speed is really important. Just some basic stuff, like always booking a meeting from a meeting. So like, don't ever say to someone on the phone, like, oh yeah, call me back in an hour and like hang up on them or, you know, or be like, oh, like right now is not a good time. Like, okay. Like never leave anything open-ended, you know, (laughs) always be like, okay, can I call you back at like 2 PM or something like that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You never want to put like the, the action or onus on the, the client to contact you exactly you be proactive of like when's it should always be you call, exactly when, when's a good time to follow up yeah definitely make sure you like make it as easy as possible for them and i think the thing about the time to to the reply is when you're first you occupy like a certain mind space in you know with yeah. someone so like you said if they've maybe contacted three different contractors or whatever because they're looking for quotes or whatever if you're the first one to call them you now occupy the first spot uh, how i see it in someone's mind because you're the you know you're the first person they talk to and they're probably going to put you higher than anybody else that that they contact after that point yeah the last thing too that i would say is like if you want the most amount of success from internet leads of doing marketing internet stuff is when you're delivering that estimate try and sit down at the kitchen table with them like don't don't just like email it over i know that like a lot of contractors are busy and such but it's like time and time again if we ever have a client who's having a hard time closing sales it's because they're emailing over estimates and we just say start start doing it like in person and as soon as they do that they just start coming through so yeah i think that's another thing where it's like you kind of blend in if it's just an email it's like there's a price here's the other price it's like exactly yeah there's there's no personal connection and depending on your service but if for whatever reason it doesn't work to meet in person schedule a zoom call or say hey can we we jump on a video call quickly and that way at least you're like going through it with them you know on the spot they can ask questions You, you can get a feedback so you know obviously in person is is the best but even if you can just get on a zoom call sending an email yeah it's, it's just you know it's so easy for them to ignore it or just to like compare price to price essentially instead of the actual you know value that you're bringing um as as the contractor so um 100%. yeah any last thoughts or or things you wanted to touch on no i think that's pretty good we touched everything that i yeah. think uh awesome. would be helpful yeah. yeah majorly insightful episode i want to thank you so much for coming on matt and, and sharing your expertise with us thank you